How's it going? This is Charles Botenston from BPI. Today we're going to be talking about pricing your home and ensuring that it's actually priced correctly, that there's a strategy behind it, that there's comparables behind it, that it's not just grabbed out of the air and this is not just exactly what I want. And the reason being, as the thumbnail says shockingly, that if the agent agrees with the initial price that you talk about, you should be a little bit worried. That's kind of like going into an apartment and you go up to the homeowner and you say, hey, listen, it's priced at a million. And then you say, I'll give you 900. And the owner goes, okay. And you think, oh wait, maybe, is there something I'm missing? Why did they just agree immediately? Why, why, why did I throw out such a low ball and over 10% off the asking price? And they actually said, yes. It's the exact same thing, okay? When you actually walk in, and you discuss the price, it shouldn't be, what do you want to list it for? Perfect, let's list it, sign the contract. The reason being is that if an agent is not willing to defend the comparables that they have pulled, what are the chances that they're able to actually de defend your price? If they initially agreed with whatever you said, they're going to initially agree with whatever price comes in. And you don't even know, because that's why you hired them. They're the broker they're brokering the deal. They're in between the conversations that's happening with the buyer's agent or the buyer. It's mainly the buyer's agent now. It's like 98% of the deals are with another agent. Completely arbitrary number, by the way. But I don't, it's been years since a direct buyer, maybe like one or two years that a direct buyer has come in um, and not brought in a, bro a broker. Side note, I got distracted. Anyway, Going back to defending the comparables, and the reason being is that when you hire an agent, you're essentially hiring someone to sell your apartment. But more than that, it's about getting the highest price, okay? When I meet with a homeowner, a lot of the times it's, it's revolving around commission. When, yes, I understand that 1% of a million dollars is $10,000, but to be honest, $10,000 is lost like that to a very bad negotiator. $50,000 can be lost to a very bad negotiator. And you're talking about 1%? That 1% easily could be made up in negotiations, okay? I just know. I know my track record within negotiations. The homeowner gives me a price, don't go below this, and I always, most of the time, get above that, so long as the market isn't terrible. But I get above that, and then the homeowner is overjoyed. I earned my commission, okay? So why I say... If the agent does not defend their comparables, if the agent does not defend what the market is actually gonna pay for the home or give you the expectations, hey, listen, I know we're listing it at a million dollars, but the market's really saying 950. So don't be shocked if they come in at 900 and we end up at 950. Or why don't we come at 975, the offers will come at 925, we'll end at 950. The reason being is that the market is the market is the market. I say that every time in, in front of a homeowner. And the reason being is you can't force a buyer to pay what they don't want to pay, number one. Number two is they're not dumb, okay? They're extremely, they're actually more educated than the majority of the agents because these buyers have walked into the product that's around your $1 million property. So in other words, if you price apartment A at a million dollars, they've seen apartment D in this area, apartment F in this area, all around the same price range. So they've walked in and they know the market. They know what's overpriced. They're not dumb. They're not stupid. You know, when, when any, anytime I hear like, we'll get that one buyer, there is no one buyer that's going to just magically appear. You know, it, it's, it's, it's kind of, just betting on the lottery and, and hoping to win. You know, you, like, I hope I can get this price. So in other words, to the thumbnail, to the shocking thumbnail, is that if the agent cannot defend their comparables, they're not gonna defend their, your price, okay? They don't care. So you have to say, okay, have your price in mind. This is the best way to do it. Have your price in mind as the homeowner. Then you ask the broker, okay, what do you think the price is? They'll come up with their price or their price range. We give a price range because the exact price is impossible, but you give a price range. And then you go over the three scenarios going at the market, 
just above the market or high flutin above the market, which is a moonshot, which we never recommend doing because it's just going to sit and it's going to look bad. And then every buyer is going to walk in and say, what's wrong with that? Why has it been on for 75, 105 days? There's got to be something wrong with it. When I just came from a place that was seven days on the market, I would rather go with the place that's seven days on the market than 105. And I understand it's your apartment and there's an emotional attachment. You bought it. It's the, there's a human bias behind it. It's not confirmation bias, but there's a human bias around something you own. It's, it's something along the lines of loss aversion. But when you're actually interviewing the agent, if they cannot actually logically, not emotionally, logically defend the price that they're walking into or the price range that they're actually giving, then don't hire them because they don't know the market, okay? And don't be mad if an agent comes in because we come in all the time and say, listen, you're not going to like the price. And we don't get hired a lot of the times because an agent buys the listing. They buy the listing and they just say, this is what we could sell it for. The expectations are completely unaligned. The owner is mad after three months because they thought they can get X, but they're actually going to probably get Y because they had a price reduction that they didn't think they would ever have in their life as large as they did. And now they're mad and they had a bad experience and then they, they blame it on the brokers. The problem is, is that there's a slew of brokers that will buy the listing. And then there's a slew of brokers that will be honest about what the market wants. So when you're interviewing the agent, it is vital to not get emotional about the price they give you. Obviously, if it's completely below the asking price, which is very rare, to be honest, because even homes, we have a home, it's not the ideal market to be going over the asking price, but we have an offer over the asking price. Okay. And the reason being, I walked in, I said, this is what the market wants to pay. I was wrong. The market actually wants to pay more and the market will pay more if the market thinks that price is undervalued. So hope this helps a little bit. If you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below. Have an amazing day and we'll see.